All right, we are in the new series today called Jesus is King. How many people know Jesus is King? Jesus just showed his kingship right here in front of everybody. Uh, it's a Christmas season, and, and kind of selfishly, I wanted to just talk about um, the Christmas story. Uh, I think this is my only time preaching in December, so I'm just, I just like reading these scriptures, and so I thought I'd build a message around it, honestly. Um, Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. This is 700 years before the birth of Christ. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Isn't that amazing that God sent a son unto you and unto me? Sometimes we think that Jesus came to save the world, which he did, but he also came to save you individually. He came unto us. And the government will be on his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful. God is wonderful. He's not mean. He doesn't want to condemn you. He doesn't want to get you in trouble. He's wonderful. He's full of wonder. When you look at God, you should be full of wonder. He's a counselor. You can go to him in time of need. He can speak into your world, into your word, world through this book, through other people in your life. He's a counselor. He's a mighty God. Mighty is powerful, warrior, champion, giant, valiant, strong. That is on the inside of you. That is your DNA. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. The title of our series is Jesus is King. You may recognize that title, it's on an album. <laughs> Any Kanye fans in the building? I just became one as soon as he wrote that <laughs> album. We should be behind him. We should be cheering for him, we should be praying for him. He's shifting an entire culture. One person, one influencer. That's why we have Pathfinder, so we want you to raise you up in whatever you are called to do so that you can shift culture. That's how we disciple nations. When we get somebody like Kanye, and he begins to write about Jesus, and you might say, well, his life isn't you know, in line with what, but that's okay, he's on a journey just like everybody else. But guess what, if he turns one person towards Christ, it's probably worth it. Justin Bieber just told 89, pe 89 million people that Jesus is his king. Come on, something's happening, something's happening. We need to take, tori, take territory in every sphere, in every sphere, in buildings, in media. We need to own the airwaves, we need to own the media. We need to own music and entertainment. Come on, we need to own every area of life. Jesus is king in every area of culture, in every area of society. He's king, he's king, and he's gonna use what Kanye, Kanye himself can shift an election. That's my belief. He's given people permission to think for themselves. Incredible. Incredible. So Jesus gets prophesied about 700 years before he comes. And then I switch this around, guys. Luke 1, 31 to 33. An angel comes to Mary, Gabriel, and says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Is there a more beautiful name than Jesus? He will be great. And he will be called the son of the highest because he's a king. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David because he's a king. He will reign because he's a king over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there will be no end. And then an angel had to also come to Joseph because they had gotten together. She was already pregnant and she was with child. And Joseph's thinking about this going, what do I do? What do I do? I have to put her away? Because this is not good in this culture to be pregnant out of wedlock. So they were married, but they hadn't. Uh, consummated the marriage, they were still living apart. They were still living apart. And so, but while he thought about this, while Joseph was thinking about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. It's supernatural. And she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Do you know what that word save means? It means saved, it means healed, it means delivered, and it means prospered. Saved, healed, delivered, and prospered. If that's all you remember from tonight, saved, healed, delivered, and prospered. That's what Jesus died to pay for, so if we're not living in it, then we're outside of his will, but tonight you're gonna get back in. We're gonna pray in a little bit. 
So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Amazing. Then he gets born. Matthew 2, 1 to 2. I, I just like these scriptures. It reminds me of like my childhood. All of these scriptures around Christmas takes me back to my childhood of all these stories. It says, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> puberty, <laughs> behold, <laughs> wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star, we've seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. So these wise men came and they saw his star, and they came to worship him. The title of my message tonight is, A Star is Born. A Star is Born. A star is born. Jesus is king. He is the ruler. He will reign forever. He is the creator of all things. The Bible says nothing was created outside of him. The creator always has authority over his creation. So Jesus is king. He's king. But even Jesus, even though he was prophesied about 700 years before the Messiah, even though he was conceived supernaturally, even though he was born as a king, he needed a star. He needed a star to announce him, to introduce him, to say, this is the Messiah. This is the prophesied one. So the wise men came and they saw his star and they worshiped him. Even though he was a king, he needed to be confirmed as the Messiah. My daughter, my daughter was, uh, uh, when she was younger, two, three, four, five-ish, um, I used to announce her all the time. I used to introduce her. She, she would be like getting ready with, with Becky and like doing her hair or something like that. And, I, and as she's walking out, I'd, I'd announce her. I'd introduce her. And she, she used to love it. And, uh, and, but, but now she doesn't really let me do it. And so it's kind of sad, but I'm going to tell you, like, this is, this is something that I would have said, like, if it was today, I would have introduced her like this. I would have said, about to walk on this stage. She's a blonde bombshell. She's a dancer. She loves to sing. She's an artist. She can draw and she can paint. She enjoys quesadillas and pasta and any kind of dessert she can get her hands on. She enjoys playing in the sand at the beach and other fun activities. She hails from El Cajon, California. She stands four feet, four inches at a lean and mean 51 pounds. Would you please welcome to the stage, Henley Therese Heinrichs. But I would introduce her, something like that. And she would walk down the, down, down the hallway, and she would be smiling. And everybody in the room would be anticipating her entrance. It was like the introduction or the announcement would give her credibility to who she was. So she would walk into the room, and people would already have this expectation of who she is. It was an announcement. It set her up for success. It's kind of like that star. The star was a sign. It was an announcement. It was an introduction to who Jesus was. A child was born. He was born king, but even that child needed a star to be born to confirm that the child was born, that the king was here, that the Messiah was here. It's not a coincidence that a star is a very bright light because the Bible says that Jesus was the light of the world. It was prophesying him coming into this, wor into this world. Let me just tell you that you are that star. You are his star. You are the light. Because Jesus was the light of the world, and then he passed the baton to you and I, and he said, you are light of the world. And then he said, let your light so shine that they may see your good works and glorify you. Glorify your Father in heaven. Let you be the star that the wise men come, and they see the star, and they worship him. Let them see your light and worship him. Your life is an announcement. Your life is an introduction. Does your life give Jesus credibility? Does it announce him in a good way or does it give him a bad name? Are you using the gifts that God has given you to get people to worship you or to get people to worship him? Because God has no problem elevating you if you're willing to elevate him. 
Jesus says, God, glorify your son that I may glorify you. That's why God has no problem elevating somebody like Kanye who's speaking Jesus because he has influence over the whole culture. But what is your life saying about Jesus? Is it giving him credibility? Is it setting him up for success? Your life is a testimony. A testimony is evidence of him. That is what your life says. You are a light, a sign pointing to the Messiah, pointing to Jesus. Testimonies are powerful. Testimonies are powerful. We were just talking about testimonies over Thanksgiving. As we're, as we're you know, saying everything that we're thankful for, we start talking about testimonies. And my son says that everybody in Alliance has a radical testimony. Every time they speak, they have this radical testimony. And he was wondering, he was saying he didn't have a testimony because he lives a pretty normal life. And we were talking about, yeah, God can bring you from addiction to freedom. He can bring you from poverty to blessing. He can bring you from sickness to healing. He can bring you from the depths of darkness up to be a successful married person with a successful life. And that's radical. He does radical things. But he can also take somebody like my son who is, who is living in a house of blessing. And that's just as radical. If you look out around the world, you will see that that is a radical testimony of somebody that lives a normal life. Normal. Somebody that doesn't have to deal with all of the things that some people have to deal with. That's radical. That's radical. Somebody that's going to grow up in a house that is prosperous. Somebody that's going to grow up in a house with two parents. Somebody that's going to grow up in a house with a family that loves him. Grandparents that love him. Friends that love him. That's radical. We all have a testimony, and your testimony speaks and points to Jesus, the King. It points to him. Testimonies are powerful. Revelations 12, 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, not the thought of their testimony. Your testimony needs to be spoken, needs to be activated. Word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. You might be here tonight and you say, well, I don't have a testimony like my son was saying, or maybe you just got saved and you haven't seen God do radical things yet, so you don't know what to share or what to say. I got good news for you. Psalms 119, 111. It says, your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. In other words, this psalmist is pointing back to all the testimonies that God had already done with Moses, with Noah, all of the wars and battles with David. And he's saying, I'm taking those testimonies as an inheritance for me. So that, my, so that my heart can rejoice. In other words, he was borrowing the testimonies and saying, you know what, I'm going to use those testimonies for my life. You have a testimony. It's the testimony of Jesus. How much longer have we lived than that psalmist right now that we can look back into the Bible, into the New Testament, into the life of Jesus and Peter and Paul and the disciples, and we can grab those testimonies as our testimonies because we're the body of Christ. I remember when I was in real estate, commercial real estate, when I just got started, I was like uh, 26. I'd never really had a job before besides baseball, if you want to call that a job. So I step into this, this world of millionaires, and I had never bought a property. I was living at my parents' house making $1,000 a month. How am I going to sell myself, my services, to a millionaire who owns tens of millions of dollars of property? Let me tell you, I had, I had a Monday morning meeting. And we would all get together on Monday mornings and every, all the agents in the office would come and they would share their testimony, how they closed that deal, how they overcame that dispute, how they got financing for that person. And they would share these testimonies. So you know what I would do? I would take those testimonies and I would go into my meetings and I would say, this is how we handle that. I got a testimony for that. This is how we got that person financed. This is how we overcame that objective. I would take those testimonies and I would borrow them and I would declare them. And guess what? I was selling $10 million properties I didn't even own anything but after I sold it then I started to own stuff your testimony is powerful your testimony is powerful revelation revelation 1910 says this for the testimony of Jesus I just heard this this week this is so epic for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy is a positive declaration about what's to come. It's a prediction. It's a prediction. It's also a, a, a declaration that can change an atmosphere, that can shift a situation. In other words, I believe that if sometimes if God gives you a word and you don't speak it, it's not going to happen. So if, so, so if God gives you a word, you need to say it. You need to declare it. 
You need to speak it out. Otherwise, it might not happen. You can declare a thing according to the word of God and you can change the situation. You can shift atmospheres. That's what prophecy is. That's what prophecy is. It's a declaration. Testimony is evidence or witness to something that happened. Evidence or witness to something that has happened. So a prophecy is a prophetic declaration about a, about a future event, a prediction, and testimony is evidence or a witness of something that has happened. But a testimony isn't meant to just be a memory about what happened in the past, but a prediction about what is about to happen in the present. When we do communion, we're not just doing communion talking about what Jesus did so everybody can clap and say, man, Jesus was awesome. How did he get out of the grave like that? That was amazing. He shed his blood for us. That's amazing. No, that testimony carries a spirit of prophecy. It's, it's pregnant with power to do what he did back then to do it again right now. There's a spirit of prophecy when you declare your testimony. It's not just a memory. It's not just a memory. The word testimony comes from the Greek word that says, do it again. Do it again, God. So when you share your testimony, you're not just talking about a memory. You're impregnating the atmosphere and you're prophesying, God, do it again. That's why we gotta share. That's why they overcame, the, the, overcame him with the word of their testimony. When I tell people that I got healed of kidney failure, I don't just tell you that so you can go, man, that's so cool. That's so cool. You know why I say it? And this verse gave me clarity this week. I say it because I know God can do it for me. He can do it for you. I've shared my testimony around the world. People have been healed of kidney and liver function because of the testimony that I declared. It impregnates the atmosphere when you start to share testimonies. That's why every week on my Instagram, I share a testimony of healing. Because I want to inspire, because if God can do it for them, he can do it for you. Testimonies are powerful. It carries a spirit of prophecy. God, do it again. Do it again. When I share about how I prayed for a woman who had breast cancer and got healed, or I prayed for a woman who had skin cancer and got healed, when I prayed for a young boy, five years old, right here of cancer and he got healed, when I share that, it's not so that you can clap and give me glory. It's so that you can realize if he did it for him, he can do it again for you. And it's for you to look at that and glorify him. That's a star, that's an announcement, that's a sign for you to worship him. A star is born, God. Do it again. Do it again, God. A woman came up to me and she said, I haven't been able to get life insurance because my blood platelets are off. I have kids now, I've been eight years, I've been trying to get life insurance and no one will insure me because my blood has a disorder. So her friend brings her up, actually her twin sister, brings her up to the altar after a service. She said, my sister, eight years, has been trying to get life insurance. She didn't even want to come up. She didn't even believe, but I shared a testimony, not of blood, but of whatever. So she comes up and we pray. I get a call a couple of weeks later, or I get a Facebook message. You're not gonna believe this. Coincidentally, after eight years, now all of a sudden a life insurance company tested my blood and they're gonna insure me. This was a year ago, I just saw her three weeks ago and she said, my blood's still perfect. I have life insurance. God, do it again. God, do it again. Do it again. When I share testimonies of how somebody said and said, I am in debt and I need to get out. And we pray. And all of a sudden they close the deal in a week that usually takes eight weeks. I don't share that. All of a sudden they get jobs, all of a sudden they get unexpected checks. That's why every time we have an offering message, we try to get somebody up here with a testimony. Then we say, God, do it again. Because if he can do it for Sam, he can do it for you. I prayed for this guy and he, he, he went out under the power of God, I didn't even know what was wrong with him. That week he calls me, he said, John, when you prayed, I, I went down under the power of God and I started memory, remembering all of these things that happened in my past that I had blocked out because I was abused as a kid. He said, now I know why I am how I am. 
because all these memories, all the things my dad told me that I blocked out as a kid, now I remember them. Now I know how to deal with this stuff. And then he says, I was at the beach and I couldn't swim because I had one leg that was partially paralyzed. It was numb all the time. And he said, I found myself swimming and it, I realized I was healed. God, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. I was, I was praying for this, this. God gave me a word of knowledge for a, 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 somebody that had a, a leg shorter than the other one. I never heard that word of knowledge before. I called it out, she came forward in front of a hundred, hundreds of people right here on the stage at our other campus. We watched her leg grow in front of everyone. 100, 100, 150 people would have saw it this close. God, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. He can do it again. We don't share testimonies just so that we can clap. We share testimonies with a spirit of prophecy on it, with a prediction that what happened then can happen now. God, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. I was praying last time. I was praying. God gave me a word for someone with nightmares and night terrors, tormenting spirits. So I canceled. I broke that power. Everybody was standing. Somebody back there hit the deck, fell on the ground, came up afterward crying and said, when you prayed for nightmares, I've been having nightmares for however long. Bam, she hit the deck. She felt something leave. Her sister couldn't believe it. She got delivered right there. Another woman came up and she said, when you, when you were talking about fear, I heard voices in my head that said, don't go forward, you're gonna pay for this. Devil's a liar. So she said she fought it all service. She fought it all service. Then she comes forward at the end of the service, powerfully delivered right there of the spirit of fear because she fought that voice. If God can deliver her from fear, he can deliver you. We've had people come into services uh, uh, about to kill themselves, spirit of suicide on them. But they come into the house of God and they see hope. They feel hope. They get delivered from murder, from suicide in a moment. God can do it again. He can do it again. He can do it again. Diabetes healed right there. Right there. Schizophrenia. I was praying for some guy. He had schizophrenia, all these voices in his head. I said, what happened? He goes, I heard two voices say, I got to go. And they left. Right there. Right there. I was like, that's pretty sweet. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. I was praying for this girl over here, this woman. She had her hands, she couldn't move her hands. They were, uh, she had a skiing accident. She had jammed her hands with her ski poles that weekend, which, you know, this was a Sunday, so it was probably Saturday or Friday. She couldn't move her hands. I started to pray for her right over there by the door as she was, le as she was leaving. She said, hey, can you pray for me? I said, yeah. We prayed. Her hands got ice cold. I felt them. I was holding them. Her hands got ice cold. Ten seconds later, she was like, oh my gosh, I'm healed. She can move her hands around. She can move her hands around. Her hands got ice cold. It was crazy. It's a crazy miracle from an accident. I prayed for a lady on stage who had a, who, who fell out of like a, a, a building or something and broke her back. 12 years, she couldn't move. 12 years, right there, got healed. After 12 years, if God can do it for her, he can do it again. He can do it again. He can do it again. Why don't you stand to your feet? Why don't you stand to your feet? Morgan Irvin had sciatic pain for over a year. Spent over $100,000 on doctors, on MRIs, on scans, taking the best legal drugs he could find for the pain. He got healed, probably like right about here, at a DNA service. And he didn't even want me to pray for him. It's true story, it's in his book. But he got healed right here after 18 months of taking drugs and pills and no one could figure out what was wrong with them. A little simple prayer because he was willing. And he's on the floor stretching out, doing all this weird stuff. I'm like, dude, what's wrong with that guy? I didn't know him at the time. He's like doing all this stuff. Later I find out if God can do it for him, God can do it for you. Thank you for tuning in, church. We hope this message reached your heart and was one in season for you. We're eager to hear how God is moving in your world. If you have a praise report or prayer request, send us an email at online at c3sandiego.com to share. Also, to partner with us financially so we can reach people all over the world, go to c3give.com. We know you'll be blessed by your giving. 
Thanks again, church, and until next time, we'll see you soon.